Men, this is the Leupold RX-1600i because they needed to include a lot of characters in the name. Um, and this is our favorite rangefinder. So we actually bought seven rangefinders, uh, really pretty much cleaned out Cabela's. <laughs> we're like, we want one of all your rangefinders in kind of a Russian voice too. Um, anyway, we tested all seven of them, and if you haven't seen that video, you really should go watch it. Um, a lot of helpful information in there and uh, in-depth review. But if you just want the like too long, didn't watch version, just go buy this, uh, and we have an affiliate <laughs> link. Um, if you would click it in the description, it helps us even if you're not necessarily buying this instant. So why this one? Yeah, well, okay, so you could ask like, you know, why this over a $200 one or over a $150 mm -hmm. one? Or, you know what? We tested an $800 one too. Mm -hmm. When we compared all the different stats and the things that are important to us, mm -hmm. this just came out on top um, for multiple reasons. One, the build quality is good, mm -hmm. right? It's a nice, heavy plastic, feels like some metal in there. Um, nice rubberized coating. I feel pretty good about this build quality. Mm -hmm. um, I do kind of feel like it's going to get scuffed up out on the hunt. And a that's kind bit. of the one the, thing. The rubberized section at the bottom. Yes. It uh, feels like it might get a little scuffed. So if you're kind of a prima donna huh, and you want uh -huh. it to look perfect, go by the Vortex. It had a little bit better build quality, but yeah. it's really similar. And the other thing about this one is it's not specifically listed as waterproof. Mm -hmm. um, it, again, this has a very similar, very similar build to the mm -hmm. Vortex, um, which is listed as waterproof, but where it's not specifically listed that, that way. That drives me crazy. Yeah, it's like, Dude, why would you where I not... hunt, there's weather, <laughs> right? <laughs> there's mud, there's water, there's rain, there's stuff. Snow sometimes, you know? Yes. So those are the things that kind of all hold me back. All hunting gear should be waterproof. But here's all the thing. We tested out all of these different rangefinders, and what we found was that in terms of like how far it ranges, how accurately it ranges, and how quickly it ranges, this was the best one. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I got out of the $800 rangefinder that we didn't get out of this was just a little bit more distance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's dive into that just a little bit more, okay? So in terms of just like how accurately it ranged, um, basically most of them at normal ranges were within a couple yards of each other. Yeah, I mean, almost all of them, even the fairly cheap ones, like, yeah. They were just, you'd test all of them at 600 yards and bang, 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 they were all 598, yeah. 601, you know, they were all right in there. So if you're worried about accuracy, you really shouldn't be at the normal range, the which normal is what range. you said. Exactly. The issue is at the very short range and at the very long range, some of the rangefinders we tested gave us just crazy Weird. results. Like we'd, you know, shoot it at my neighbor's house or whatever that's clearly a hundred yards or so away, and it would say like twenty-five. And yeah. We're like what the? Yeah. We had one where like not we, this one. Not this one. No. Uh, uh, there were the some there. that we would test. Like we wanted to see how short they could go because mm -hmm. I want to know. Can I use this rangefinder in archery and still be accurate? Yeah. And most of them again were within about a yard of each other, mm -hmm. as short as about ten yards. Yeah. There was one that was reading eight to ten yards off mm -hmm. of the other ones at that, that short range. Now, it was the bush it? now. Yeah. It was. Um, so they would say nine and it would say 19. Mm -hmm. And it was just ridiculous. This one was really spot on with even the $800 SIG that we tested at the, the whole range of what this thing if will this measure. If this gives you the number, it's right. right. And that's extremely important. Or we it's at some... least as accurate or as right. Yeah. as any rangefinder out there. Right, so we, there were some though that at the long range, past a thousand yards, every once in a while, yes. you'd range it and it would say a thousand yards and then you'd range it again a minute later and it would say like 1300. It's like, whoa, Ooh. that doesn't work. No. Because you know, if you're the long range shooter, you took a shot thinking it was a thousand and yes. it could be 1300. It needs to be consistent. And, and this thing this is consistent. Was consistent. If it gives you the number, it will give you the same number every time you every test time. it. Every time. And that was that was just fantastic. And not only does it give you the same number every time, but it does it quickly. Yes. Um, some of the range finders, you kind of had to hold the button a bit. And at a thousand yards, it's a little bit hard to hold super steady. Mm -hmm. And so if it's going to take like eight seconds mm -hmm. to, to, to range for you, that may be where some of that inaccuracy comes from is it's like, yeah, I'm on a hill. And if I move up a tiny bit, like it is 10 yards farther away. Yeah. Now, not 300 yards farther away, mm -hmm. but still I think, you know, 
being able to range quickly uh, was a huge bonus of this one. Yeah, and that was where the Nikon fell down for me. I was really yeah. liking a lot about the, the Nikon, Nikon Monarch, yeah. but I felt like I had to, uh, didn't get, uh, and yeah. then it would finally get Right, right. Or, or because of the inaccuracies or the inconsistencies, I would have to range something four or five times to be sure. To be sure. It's like, okay, yeah, uh, out of the five, three of them were this one, so I can go with that. Um, again, we didn't have any of that issue. So consistency of and accuracy was fantastic. I also like that it's a six times magnification. Uh-huh. Uh, some of them are, you know, five, seven, seven, some of them five. Yeah. Um, generally, more is better for me with the yeah. rangefinder. I mean, if you're also wanting to use it for archery, maybe not the seven. Sure. Uh, but a six, I feel like, is is nice. And at that long range, if it can range to a thousand yards or more, you really need that because, like, right. you, that issue you'd said, where like. <sighs> But was it quite where I had wanted? Right. It's real easy to mess up. Yep. So, um, yeah, I did the like that. The was good. So we did this, uh, you know, different tests, different times a day. In the low light test, how did it do there? Yeah, so in the low light test, let's see here. Some um, of them did, struggled in low light. Right. Some of them did better in low light. So this one didn't do quite as well in low light, mm -hmm. but only by about 100 yards. So... Let's talk about that range here. Mm -hmm. um, a good rule of thumb for most range finders is that the number they put on them, so in this case 1600, mm -hmm. that's off of a reflective surface and usually you're only gonna be able to range a normal object at about half of that. That's the number that the salesman told us. And so even when we tested a reflective surface, we still couldn't get the number that- on a, Yeah, on a lot it, of them. Really hardly any of them promised. So this one says 1600, so it's saying up to 1600. On hard surfaces, we were able to consistently get a reading up to 1,570 yards. Like it actually, it actually did what does it what it says wow. it'll do, <laughs> which was incredible given because none of the other ones did. Most of them were like a third of the range that yeah. they advertised. The Vortex was about half of what yeah. it advertised. And this one was pretty much the same on hard and soft surfaces. Where which is it, impressive. Where it fell down was just in the low light, it fell down to about 1,400 yards, mm -hmm. which is still impressive given yeah. that like the vortex the vortex ranger 1800 that's the same price as this one was only able to do in low light um 650 yards yeah i mean this that's is more than short. double and yeah. and i do care about the what we call soft surfaces yes but like when we're arranging you know dirt or uh sagebrush things like that because you use that a lot when you're actually hunting yes, or shooting for that matter um, you use that all the time, you know, where you're like, okay, this spot is at 700 yards. I'm waiting for the elk to stand out and I need to uh -huh. stock up 200 yeah. to get there. Uh, so having that ability, I think is really, really important. I, and I, I can't stress, I mean, I don't know that it would make that big of a difference if this cost a ton more, but like on my sheet of when we tested all these things, um, I had a lot of them where I had said the time to range was fast. Mm -hmm. This was the only one where I said very fast. Yes, it was just it, is super it just speedy. beat all of them. Um, anyway, so I kind of became a bit of a fan. And that matters. <laughs> that matters a lot. It does. You know where that bear steps out, and it's got you know you got a little clearing before it's back in the thick stuff. You don't want to be like poking around. Please breed. Yeah. Please. <laughs> I've got 13 more seconds till this elk is out of sight. Right. One more thing I would point out. This is maybe not the most the thing that most people would think about. But on some of them, the battery compartment, you had to unscrew quite a ways. And when you tried to line up the screws to screw it back on, you would, it, would, it was really like easy to cross hard, thread. Yeah. This one is a quarter turn battery compartment and it's done. Mm -hmm. So I know and that's it's metal on the inside. Yes. Um, and so it maybe doesn't seem like that would be a big deal. But if you're out in the woods and you cross thread your battery compartment, suddenly um, you're no longer making the battery connection and it doesn't work. And if, if a rangefinder company wants to just really, really, really please us, make it waterproof. Yeah. And stop using these dang CR2 batteries. That's true. Dude, if they're all I'm, they all use it. They all use it, all of them that we tested. If I am up in the woods and my and I go to range find the elk of a lifetime and my battery's dead, I'm gonna be ticked. Yeah. I don't necessarily want to carry around extra batteries, but I will. Um, and if I've got to run into some gas station in the way out in the sticks to get a battery for my rangefinder, they're not going to have CR2. <laughs> uh, it, ah, waterproof, 
and double A's. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, so that's our review of the Leupold RX1600. We're putting a ton of, of work into Backfire. Give us a subscribe and then you'll see some of our best videos popping up in your YouTube feed.